Hi guys, uh, good evening. Uh, uh, I hope I am uh, visible and audible to you all. Just uh, give me a quick confirmation if I am. Uh, so this is uh, the seventh part of the series that we are having on the top uh, 100 images for FMG exams. Um, so 10 images uh, daily we will be looking at uh, from now on uh, and we'll complete uh, the 100 images. And this is something that you need to know. Uh, as far as your exams go so you make sure that you see all of these 10 videos that i will be posting uh, over the next four days and uh, you complete it i will also give you the complete pdf so you can annotate it and you can revise these images just before your exam okay uh, <laughs> daily yes uh, the timings might uh, change here and there but uh, definitely we'll be meeting uh, uh, more frequently and uh, once we're done all right so abhi daily rahega ek ek class 20 odd minutes every day once we're done with top 100 images i had planned that uh, the next thing which is very very important as far as radiology is concerned is mastering all the pyqs all right so i will pick out the top 50 previous year questions just like humne images dekhe 10 10 part mein. so in baby steps in five classes we will look at uh, 10 10 mcqs and we'll finish the top 50 previous year questions all right so this way at least radiology for fmg will be complete from my side as far as the revision is concerned that you look at the 100 images you look at 50 pyqs and hopefully this will take care of 100 percent of the questions that you will get hopefully uh, for fmg okay is that clear everybody so uh, this will all be done before 1st december all right before 30th november i plan to complete all of this but in return what do i ask from you i'm going to be taking two quizzes for you all right one is going to be on the app with leaderboard and one quiz on uh, youtube all right and then you have to give me correct answers after doing this so that is something that i will ask for in uh, return as guru dakshina okay that you will get questions correct in both of these quizzes okay deal so that is the plan as far as fmg exam is concerned okay right Deepu and everybody else so that is our plan till uh, November 30 we'll be meeting on a daily basis and we'll complete this short scoring subject um, till 1st of December all right uh, for those of you coming here for the first time um, I am Zainab and I've uh, done my MBBS and MD in radiology from AIMS and I teach radiology on an academy along with a few uh, things here and there um, this is uh, the batch course which is starting uh, from 17 started yesterday and uh, these are the various tests that are there. Uh, Need PG ka bhi batch course hai. This is the batch course for 2023. So depending on your exam of interest, you can get the subscription plans and you can use my code, which is ZBURA for um, doing so. All right, so let's begin with the uh, first image of today's class, one out of 10. What do you think is the answer to this particular image? What is the modality that I'm showing you? In names, they give you an image like this and they ask, what is this modality? You know, so basics, very, very important. So this is an ultrasound image, right? So this is the liver that you see here. And when you see a black tubular structure near the liver, very good. This happens to be gallbladder. And within the gallbladder, as all of you perfectly identified, are these dependent stones. And how do we identify? The typical feature is going to be this shadowing, this posterior acoustic shadowing that they produce, isn't it? So this becomes gallstones and we identify them as being echogenic. Could to white lagenge, could to echogenic or hyper echoic lagenge. But the feature is posterior acoustic shadowing all right investigation of choice for gallstones remember the ball stops at ultrasound ultrasound he initial ultrasound he best gallstones we don't do ct because 90 percent are radio lucent so no point of doing a ct for gallstones everywhere else if they ask you investigation of choice for renal stones salivary stones you will say it is a non-contrast ct yes everyone this is clear to us okay on the other hand one more image of gallbladder and now i'm showing you something different what am i showing you now non-dependent and we are having these comet tail jasa shiny shiny stuff emanating from the upper wall ye kya hai jo ki comet tail jasa lag raha hai this is called the comet tail sign in gallbladder ultrasound anybody can tell me the diagnosis here yes this becomes adenomyomatosis right so this is adenomyomatosis of gallbladder 
वॉट इज दिस कंडीशन क्या होता है इसमें सो डू यू नो वर्ल्ड ब्लैडर एज द वर्ल्ड म्यूकोजा होता है मस्क्यूलरिस होता है सो वॉट हैपन्स इज देर आर दीज साइनस विच फॉर्म फ्रॉम द म्यूकोजा और राइट म्यूकोजा में से हर्नीट होके वॉल के अंदर ही यू हैव दीज साइनस इन साइनसिस को क्या बोलते हैं इनको बोलते हैं रॉकी टैंस की एस्टॉफ साइनसिस आर ए साइनसिस बोलते हैं प्यार से है ना सो दीज साइनस बेसिकली विल अक्यूमुलेट कोलेस्ट्रॉल इसमें छोटा छोटा कोलेस्ट्रॉल डिपॉजिट हो जाता है सो दिस छोटो छोटो कोलेस्ट्रॉल विल कॉज दिस छोटा छोटा शेडोइंग कैन यू सी इमेजिन कि यहाँ से ये सारे छोटे छोटे शेडोज हैं जो कि अपने को दिख रहे हैं सो दिस डिपोजिशन ऑफ कोलेस्ट्रॉल विद इन द रॉकेटैंस की एस्ट्रॉफ साइनस इन एडिलोमायोमोटोसिस इज वॉट प्रोड्यूस इज कॉमन टेल ठीक है समझ आया सबको सो अपर वॉल से जब ऐसे ऐसे लाइन्स दिखे छोटी छोटी लाइन्स नॉट लाइक शेडोइंग दैट इज कॉमन टेल एडिनोमायोमोटोसिस ओके इसी कंडीशन को पैथ में आप पढ़ोगे कोलेस्ट्रोलोसिस ओके एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज वॉट काइंड ऑफ गोल ब्लैडर स्ट्रॉबेरी गोल ब्लैडर है ना तो ये भी आप साथ में याद रख सकते हैं ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट एडिनोमायोमोटोसिस going on to the third image of the day very very important so plus users we have studied this just yesterday they can tell me what we are seeing so here i have if i tell you that there is an infant who is having difficulty in micturating he is having urinary obstruction what is the diagnosis so difficulty micturation remember this is the most common cause aims ka sawal aa gaya in one line of question in aims most common cause of lower urinary tract obstruction in an infant in a neonate in a newborn in a child answer remains what answer remains posterior urethral valves puv standing for posterior urethral valves means that there are these one way valves which stop the flow of urine from going from top to bottom so what will happen there will be obstruction right do you agree if there are valves here these two will get dilated the urinary bladder will be dilated posterior urethra will be dilated and then i will see that there is this tapering all right so this can be picked up on an antenatal ultrasound so this is an antenatal ultrasound which is showing a keyhole sign do you see the similarity with a keyhole so this is what is called as a keyhole sign in posterior urethral valves wherein you see the urinary bladder and posterior urethra being dilated isse sawal aayega sure shot what is the investigation of choice and what will you say you will do an mcu three letter ka condition three letter ka investigation aise yaad rakho micturating cysto urethrography so the baby will void and we will see that oh bladder is dilated posterior urethra is dilated but this anterior urethra is very very narrow right so this is what we see in posterior urethral valve understood keyhole sign on ultrasound investigation of choice micturating cysto urethrography okay treatment is actually endoscopic so what they do is via the urethra they will go in urethroscopy say these valves are fulgurated so this is called as urethroscopic or endoscopic fulguration of the valves fulguration is just a fancy term of obliterating or burning up the valves all right so the valves would be removed all right that is the treatment okay going ahead to the next one what do we see here again something which is very very frequently tested what uh, is the sign that you are seeing if i tell you this is an old patient elderly patient 70 year ka who has chronic constipation and now presenting with acute pain abdomen obstipation failure to pass stools and flatters what do we have करेक्ट सो दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी टिपिकल ये देखते ही अपने को नेस्कैफे की याद आती है दिस इज अ कॉफी बीन साइन दैट वी आर सींग इज इट एंड वॉट डज इट रिप्रेजेंट येस इट रिप्रेजेंट्स अ केस ऑफ सिग्मोइड वॉल्यूलस दैट द सिग्मोइड कोलन इज रोटेटिंग अपॉन इट्स ओन एक्सेस देन इट्स बिकम डायलेटेड राइट सो दिस इज वॉट इज अ सिग्मोइड वॉल्यूलस ऑलवेज इंश्योर दैट इट्स सिग्मोइड वॉल्यूलस बाई चेकिंग टू पॉइंट्स वॉट टू पॉइंट्स एक तो हाउ मेनी लूप्स आर वी सी एक ये ट्यूब है एक ये ट्यूब है राइट सो वन एंड टू सो दिस इज द टू ट्यूब्स दैट वी विल सी इसको किसी ने बोला कि ऐसा भी लग रहा है कि ट्यूब बेंड हो गई बेंड ट्यूब साइन All right, so that is what it's also called as second thing. Do we see hostations? No. 
So there will be two tubes that you see and there will be no hostrations here. So you just check these two points and then mark that answer is definitely sigmoid volvulus. Okay, everybody. So this is coffee bean sigmoid volvulus. If we do a barium enema here, what will you see? यहाँ से रेक्टम से बेरियम डालेंगे डू यू अग्री जहाँ पे वॉल्यूलस हो रहा है उधर बेरियम विल स्टॉप राइट द बेरियम विल स्टॉप लाइक दिस बिकॉज इसके ऊपर तो ट्विस्टिंग हो रहा है देर इज ट्विस्टिंग देर इज वॉल्यूलस हियर सो वी विल सी दैट देर इज टेपरिंग रेक्टम एंड प्रोक्सिमल टेपरिंग ऑफ रेक्टम इज इंट इट एट द पॉइंट ऑफ वॉल्यूलस एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड एज बर्ड ऑफ प्रे साइन और बर्ड बीक साइन राइट सो दिस इज ऑल्सो अ साइन ऑफ Um, sigmoid volvulus, but on barium enema. How do you treat it, guys? Does it require surgery? अगर मैं आपसे management पूछूँ इसका, does it require surgical treatment? Not really, right? We just have to put in a flatus tube. You just put in any tube, and it will detort. So this is called endoscopic detortion. All right, that is called endoscopic detortion, right? How to identify? Ileal volvulus? You mean midgut volvulus? Yeah. So midgut volvulus is something that is associated with malrotation. All right. वो infants में मिलेगा और in kids we will see who have malrotation. All right. So what you will see is a corkscrew sign in the middle of the bowel. You will see this corkscrew rotation. That is what is the feature of midgut volvulus. Okay. Is what you can remember. Yeah. Yes. Also called as whirlpool sign shifting. Very good. So this is sigmoid volvulus. What about this? If I tell you there's an infant or a neonate with jaundice, with obstructive jaundice, what do we have here within the liver? This is a CT of the liver, right? I have these dilated biliary radicals, and one sign at the center of everything is a dot. At the center of everything is a portal radical. So what is this called? Or if they ask you in FMG, they'll directly ask you that the central dot sign. is seen with which condition and what will you see this is seen with carolis very good so this is seen with carolis disease c for central dot c for carolis carolis is a type of what it is a type of polydocal cyst isn't it anybody can tell me classification of polydocal cyst that we use kaun sa classification very nice rishti we use the type Five classification for Carolis, which is the Todani classification, isn't it? So Todani ka type five intrahepatic involvement, intrahepatic dilatation is Carolis. All right, treatment. How do you treat this liver transplant? Right, you can't do anything but a liver transplant for Carolis disease. Okay, remember that. Fine, central dot sign Carolis. Next image. If I tell you there is a patient who has diarrhea, all right, a uh, very inflammatory diarrhea, and now comes with jaundice, all right, chronic onset diarrhea है काफी सालों से अब obstructive jaundice हो गया. So first you tell me cause of jaundice and then you tell me cause of diarrhea of this patient. What is the image that we are seeing? We are seeing an MRCP image. Yeah, the MRCP showing us that there are multifocal, छोटा छोटा strictures. and then there is dilatation this gives kaisa appearance this gives us a beaded sort of appearance isn't it multifocal strictures dilatation multifocal strictures dilatation so yes jaundice is because of primary sclerosing cholangitis primary sclerosing cholangitis and the association that i was looking for that a lot of you have told me is because of uc ulcerative colitis so inflammatory bowel disease is related more commonly you see rather than cb all right so this is primary sclerosing cholangitis remember the beaded appearance yes somebody can call it string of pearl string of beads doesn't really matter as long as you know that there are multifocal strictures and dilatations all right like this got it everyone so this is mrcp okay next image First of all, identify the investigation. If I tell you there is a young female who is coming for infertility workup, infertility workup के लिए एक investigation हुआ, and this is what we saw. First, tell me what what is the investigation. If I ask you, is this CT HSG? Is this ultrasound HSG? Is this conventional HSG? Or is this a 
sonosalpingography. What will your answer be out of all of these? This is a conventional HST, right? This is a normal HST that we do. Sonosalpingography, remember, will be seen on ultrasound. Is where we inject saline and then we try and evaluate the fallopian tubes and the um, uterus or right endometrial cavity. So this is, don't be confused, HST, conventional HST. HST stands for hysterosalpingography. Means we are looking at uterus, we are looking at fallopian tubes. This is the primary investigation that we use in infertility patients to look at fallopian tubes. Fallopian tubes patent hai ya nahi, wo dekhne ke liye apan ye karte hai. So what we do is using this cannula. A Carmen's cannula can be used, a pediatric Foley's can be used, but the one which is asked in exam is a metallic cannula called Leach Wilkinson cannula. Alright, so Leach Wilkinson cannula is used through which iodinated contrast, iohexol is injected. So iohexol will go into cervix, it will go into uterus, it will go into fallopian tube. Through the fallopian tube, it will come out, right? It will come out in peritoneal cavity. So when I see that, I know it's a normal HSG. Is my kaisa uterus dikhra hai? Is it only one horn, a banana shaped uterus is what we are seeing? Like most of you telling me correctly and only one fallopian tube is seen. So this is a unicornuate uterus and this is a question which has been asked so many times, right? So only one horn of uterus, this is a Mullerian ductal anomaly unicornuate uterus okay what about this case what are we seeing here so again in the hsg everybody agrees this is a hysterosalpingography what is this now is there a problem with uterus no uterus tk it is how it should appear triangular what is happening with tubes Kya tubes may say contrast nickel rahe is there free spill that we are seeing let's see so this is the right tube and i see that tube to yahi ruk gaya Patla sa tube yahi ruk gaya. So is there free spill? No. What does this tell us? That there is a block, right? There is a tubal block that you are seeing distally. Isko bolte hai distal tubal block. On the other hand, left side mein kya ho raha hai? Tube has become very distended. Again, it is not showing any spill, right? Idhar bhi contrast peritoneum mein se gir nahi raha. It has become very, very loculated and very, very dilated. Isko kaisa appearance bolte hai? This is called as a tobacco pouch appearance, right? Tobacco pouch, retort shaped uter uh, fallopian tube. And why is this so? This is because tube is distended. Isko bolte hain hydrosalping, so right? So both of these conditions are seen with what disease? This can be seen with PID, pelvic inflammatory disease or it can be seen with tuberculosis more commonly in our country, right? So TB and PID are the two possibilities that we consider when there are bilateral tubal blocks, there is hydrosalpings, there is tubal block here. It could be in fact some people um, think it looks like a sperm. So sperm appearance, sperm head appearance bola hai, golf stem appearance bola hai. So such signs will always come in your way. Okay, everybody is this clear? Was I, uh, I think I was stuck in between, but I am back. I think I am streaming. Yeah. All right. Okay. The I think this is the right. So what about this HSG here? What about this HSG? What are we seeing here within the uterus? All right. Within the uterus itself, we are noting these abnormalities wherein there are these filling defects. Yeah, there are these filling defects that we are seeing. So what is the diagnosis in uh, this case when you have these intrauterine filling defects? So this is what is called as synecae. All right, so these are adhesions or these are synecae and this is con uh, seen in a condition called Asherman. Very good. So this is the Asherman syndrome that you are seeing wherein you will have these filling defects. Usually, kya history diya hoga? the patient will have some sort of history of any uterine intervention. 
राइट right? या तो एंडो सर्वाइकल क्यूरिटाज हुआ होगा या डीएनसी हुआ होगा डायलिटेशन एंड क्यूरिटाज सम सॉर्ट ऑफ सर्जिकल अबॉर्शन मस्ट हैव बीन डन व्हिच रिजल्ट्स इन एशमैन सिंड्रोम ऑल राइट एंड द पेशेंट यूजुअली प्रेजेंट्स विद ओलिगोमेनोरिया ऑल राइट सो ओलिगोमेनोरिया और हाइपोमेनोरिया इज हाउ द पेशेंट विल यूजुअली present here all right so this is something that is important intra uterine filling defects and additions okay right what about try and identify investigation this is not hsg but this is also a contrast study yeah so i have come back reconnected i think it should be better now all right so here what is this last image i was we are stuck on the last image what we are having here is ERCP, right? So endoscopic retrograde cholangio pancreaticography. How do we know? It's on the basis of this white endoscope, and what we are actually seeing is the pancreatic duct. So I focused on the pancreatic duct. It is is it normally so dilated? No. So we are seeing it's very dilated, and all of these side, chotu chotu side branches have opened up, isn't it? So a dilated pancreatic duct with opening of the side branches that. is what is called as a chain of lakes appearance all right so this is what is called as chain of lakes appearance and this is what is seen in pancreatitis in chronic pancreatitis what happens in chronic pancreatitis is that the complete pancreatic parenchyma is atrophic right parenchyma ho gayi nahi the complete duct becomes very dilated with opening up of the side branches all right so that is what we will see on ercp remember ercp is the gold standard for chronic pancreatitis all right it is because we can remove the stones a lot of times stones will form in the duct we can remove them we can put in a stent if there is any obstruction so this is gold standard ercp for chronic pancreatitis okay so this is what we had as far as the 10 images go and associated points that i can give you all right uh, so i'll see you all again tomorrow in the evening mostly tomorrow the timing would be around 7 or 8 o'clock all right uh, not so late at night but 7 or 8 again we'll do 10 images and we'll quickly uh, wrap up this series and we'll go on to the next okay all right guys how to distinguish ca esophagus and achalasia i have discussed this in the last series only uh, demon hunter in the last 10 images you will see achalasia will have a very smooth beak or right which is called bird beak but what we see in uh, rat tail which is irregular malignancy you will see an irregularity in the structure right so smoothness and irregularity are the main features that you will encounter okay everyone which symptom is most common in ashman again controversial but usually oligomenorrhea all right oligomenorrhea is what is most common okay this is for fmg yes predominantly these are images which have all figured in fmg exam just trying to incorporate all the possible points that everyone can benefit okay all right guys so thank you so much see you all tomorrow any other problem that you have just let me know ha huh? every day tnd types here 20 or 10 mcq image based kara lo ha ha deepu will do all right so we are starting from that only once we finish the 10 images we'll be doing 10 mcqs every day based on Uh, PYQs till November 30th. All right, that's the plan. Okay. All right, guys. So that is what we have. Uh, module. I have taken medicine classes. Um, yes, on the app also you can just go to my profile. There are many classes on from medicine topics that I have taken. Uh, just search medicine on radiology with Dr. Zainab Bora. You will find. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, other rapid revision. Yes, I will try. Paucity of time, but yes, I will try for sure. Ortho Tushar also multiple classes have been done. Uh, you know, just search orthopedics on the group. You'll find every link. All right. Okay. Um. Yeah. Most sensitive investigation for chronic pancreatitis endoscopic ultrasound. No, no. It is ERCP only. All right. So ERCP is gold standard. Most sensitive endoscopic ultrasound. Again, will not take precedence over ERCP. Yes, endoscopic ultrasound can again show you dilated ducts, but ERCP still becomes more sensitive. Okay, all right, guys. So thank you so much, and uh, see you all tomorrow. Okay.